This video is inspired by one of our conscious collaborators. Thank you, Ruby. And um, the question was, do you set an intention before doing Ho'oponopono? And usually I don't, but I'm going to read something to you and hopefully that will shed some light. Um, if you say uh, 10 incidents, per in for instance, out of the 10 incidences that happen, I'm usually just doing Ho'oponopono automatically, maybe eight of the 10 incidences. And then sometimes I will set an intention for Ho'oponopono, but it's not always. And here is something that I found not too long ago. I love reading books about Ho'oponopono. And so uh, as I get information, I definitely want to share it with you. This particular book, I don't recommend, recommend, <laughs> I don't recommend because um, it's only 76 pages and um, the cost is $19 for the physical copy or $9.99 for Kindle. And I'm definitely willing to pay $9.99 for the 76 pages, but I was a little disappointed when I read the whole book and the, the book has mostly fillers. And what I mean by fillers is uh, it will have a paragraph of full content and then it will do a call out of what was already written. So it will show or say uh, it will repeat what was already written and it does it uh, in a big box and bigger font. And so to me, that's filler. Um there are a series of eight books so i might purchase the series directly from the manufacturer the producer uh, and then save on shipping if you get it through amazon it's 19 dollars per book plus i believe it was 9.99 for shipping if you get the whole set it's uh 14.99 for shipping why would I still want to get the set, even though I know that the books have fillers? Well, I do get value out of reading Ho'oponopono books. Um, even though some of the information isn't new, I do find value from it. I think what I would have preferred, because um, the editor of these books had a 500 page transcript from radio shows 62 episodes i believe i would have just preferred to have purchased say the 500 page transcript for 100 200 dollars i love to read and i don't mind having a transcript i love it i would have preferred it uh, because with the books it's edited by topic and i would have just preferred the raw original copy but I said all that to say, you know, follow your own divinity if you should purchase this book. Um, the contents are not necessarily not anything new, but um, I like the way it's written, uh, especially what I'm going to read to you, which was written by Dr. Hewlin himself. I did know about these things through taking the Ho'oponopono seminars. Um, Dr. Joe Vitale or Mr. Joe Vitale had sold two of the three seminars with him with Dr. Hugh Lynn. Uh, he sold the seminars for $33. So um, this isn't anything new per se, but I love, again, I love the way Dr. Hugh Lynn goes over this. So um I want you to be looking for intention and I'm going to show you where it's at. So here are the four self-identity through Ho'oponopono problem solving processes that can be applied to reestablish self-identity through voiding memories, replaying problems in the subconscious mind. One, I love you. When the soul experiences memories replaying as problems, say to them mentally or silently, I love you, dear memories. I am grateful for the opportunity to free all of you and me. I love you can be repeated quietly again and again. Memories never go on vacation or retire unless you retire them. I love you can be used even if you're not conscious of problems. 
For example, it can be applied before engaging in any activity such as making or answering a telephone call or before getting into your car. And so um, that's where I see intention setting. Um, and sometimes I would set the intention for getting things done for the day. So like I will write my to-do list and my planner. And uh, before I did that, I would say, thank you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Or simply, I love you. Or simply, thank you. Number two, thank you. This process can be used with or in place of I love you. As with I love you, it can be repeated mentally again and again. Uh, three, blue solar water. Drinking lots of water is a wonderful problem solving practice, particularly if it is blue solar water. Get a blue glass container with a non metallic lid. Pour tap water into the container. Place the blue glass container either in the sun or under a lamp for at least an hour. It doesn't matter the color blue, and um, but you need to at least have a non-fluorescent lamp. And that is what I learned through the seminar. After the water is solarized or heated by the sun, it can be used in several ways. Drink it, cook with it as a rinse after a bath or shower. Fruits and vegetables love being washed in blue solar water. As with I love you and thank you processes, blue solar water voids memories replaying problems in the subconscious mind. So drink away. And four, strawberries and blueberries. These fruits void memories. They can be eaten fresh or dried. They can be consumed as jams, jellies, or even syrup on ice cream. And so he signs it, I wish you peace beyond understanding. Ka malohia no me oyo, peace be with you, Dr. Hulin. And I apologize if I mispronounced anything. Okay, so that's it for this video. You can set an attention or you can just simply do ho'oponopono. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.